Hello for the last time for now, my friends. This is Wake Angel 2001 coming at you with a review of the Corgi Showcase Collection Right Flyer. Um, okay, now this is kind of an important one to me. I know a lot of you are going to be like, what is this? Why, why is Wake Angel talking about this? Well, let me introduce you to my mouse pad. Yes, this is the mouse pad that I have used on my computer since I purchased it in 2003. Yes, this is a 20 year old mouse pad that I have always used with every computer and laptop that I've owned since 2003, the year that I was, um, I was a freshman, wait. Like, I use this, yeah, I, I actually did get this when I was still in high school. I graduated from high school in 2004, so I was still in high school when I first got this mouse pad. So yeah, um, I actually am kind of a nerd about aviation history. And when I saw that they had what was basically a um, Matchbox slash Hot Wheels Wright Flyer, I thought, oh, that's actually a really cool thing to have. Uh, so on the back, you can see other things from this series. Um, like, like you, they actually have like a continuity of time. You got the, the right flyer, you got the triplane used in World War One. You have the Concord jet, the first, uh, the first, uh, supersonic passenger plane, the F-14 from Top Gun, and of course the space shuttle. Uh, let's see, there is a blurb up there. Since the dawn of time, man has desired to fly. The showcase collection by Corgi chronicles the groundbreaking achievements of the planes and pilots who have forged a history and identity in global air and space travel. From the initial flight at Kitty Hawk to modern day space shuttle missions, these 20 models represent the history of air travel through a hundred years of flight. Collect them all. I don't really intend to be collecting the entire thing, but hey, Wright Flyer, the first, the first heavier than air steerable flying machine ever made. And of course, we're gonna look at one more blurb. Um, December 17th, 1903, the Wright Flyer lists into the air piloted by Orville Wright. While his brother Wilbur looks on, the flight lasted only 12 seconds and covered a distance of 121 feet. It is the first powered heavier than air flight. And I actually know all about that because I uh, did a report on the Wright Brothers when I was in high school. Um, uh, one of those things where you can choose your own project. Uh, oh, this is gonna make a lot of noise so I'm gonna shut off the camera. Okay, so like I was saying, the, um, the Wright Brothers plane was a culmination of three years of experimentation. Uh, the first year, they were they they had basically made a giant glider with uh, what they called the wing warping system. Basically, it was a system of ropes and pulleys which would alter the shape of the wing and allow the plane to, to turn and be steered. Uh, that. <clears throat> Uh, that was actually what they considered to be the most important part of their flying machine and the only thing that they actually patented. There had been people who had made gliders before, but they had no way of steering these gliders. Um, and, and, you know, there were some balloons that had propellers tied to them that had some capability of being steered, but, you know, they... They they were they weren't they were lighter than aircraft and they weren't as fast or maneuverable as an airplane could theoretically be. Um, and uh, the second year they made a, a larger plane to see if if it could be scaled. And the third year is when they had the first one with a, with the motor. That humble little engine um, uh, weighed it weighed just. It, it, it weighed just under 200 pounds and was able to deliver 12 horsepower. Um, they tried to commission um, an engine from from man, from like uh, auto manufacturers, but no one believed that they could make an engine so light and powerful. So the Wright brothers actually had to engineer it themselves. They they even created the first propellers for their plane through wind tunnel testing, uh, which was another first. Like they pioneered a lot of technology when they made these things.
And although that initial flight only lasted 12 seconds, uh, they would actually fly the plane three more times. The last flight lasted a full 59 seconds. Um, I remember that because it, it failed to make the newspaper headlines the next day because they figured a, the, a flight that lasted less than a minute wasn't really worth reporting on. <laughs> I found that uh, truly amusing. Um, but yes, that is that is um, the basic story of the Wright Flyer. Um, if you look inside, you can see um, the little the little statue of of good old Orville lying in the seat. Um, yes, there was no chair. You literally had to lie on your stomach to fly this thing. Uh, he would have. Um, his hips were actually part of the steering mechanism by, by shifting them side to side. He could, he could warp the wings while he used, he used his front hands to, his hands to work the levers, which would work the elevators and the rudder for, for steering. But, um, yes, that is, that is the story of how this thing worked. And uh, they would come out with the right flyer a couple of years later that would actually use, you know, a chair. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like the rest is aviation history. Those are real propellers, which you can spin by blowing on them. And just so you don't have a, um, your little Wright Brothers plane just sitting on, the, on your table with uh, nothing to do, it comes with a flight stand. Yes, the flight stand is in two parts. Uh, you got the base and the shaft. You put the shaft in the base and it connects at an angle. Which you plug in there. And I think I screwed up. Yes, I did. <laughs> you put that. Hold on a second. That goes like that, and that goes there. Yeah! And that is how you display your Wright Brothers plane. So yeah, it's a little tiny plane, it, but it still comes with a flight stand, and it, you know, it looks great. I love the detail on this thing. I mean, uh, the these things are so thin they easily would have shattered, so they used transparent plastic to, ho to hold the wings together, and then they painted the edges of them to look like wood. Um, you gotta remember, this plane was very lightweight. The fabric that you, they used to cover the wings with was like the nylon-based plastic um, fabric that was normally used in making women's undergarments. Um, and the, the, like the, 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 you know, like, uh, the, the wood itself was, um, you know, also lightweight wood. Uh, the fate of the Wright Brothers' original plane was to be dismantled. The fabric was used to make clothing for the, for the children of the, um, of the people whose land that they used to, to do their test flights on. And the, um, the wooden beams would be used in construction projects on that same farm. So, uh... Like, the original Wright Brothers plane no longer exists. Like, they do have an original Wright Flyer, which was made by the Wright Brothers on display at the Smithsonian Museum, if you want to check it out. But the plane, the one that made that famous 12-second flight, no longer exists, technically speaking. Um, but still, this is a great little piece of Americana, and... Um, I know a lot of people probably aren't going to feel too enthusiastic about a miniature of the Wright Brothers original plane, but it's just something that means a lot to me. Uh, so, yes. Um, I felt that this was probably the best one to end off on because it's uh, very personal. So, um, yeah, if you also have a love of aviation history, don't forget to like and subscribe. And this is Wake Angel 2001 signing off.